Hello, and welcome back to Tips of Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Today's lesson is the first in a new series that I'm creating in collaboration with one of my uh, industry colleagues, Tri Technical Systems. TriTech is a major supplier of point of sale systems. You can learn more about TriTech by visiting their website, technologyforretailers.com. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use an Excel pivot table when you want to analyze a point of sale report. In this case, we want to analyze using Excel a report that TriTech generates from their point of sale system for inventory by category. So TriTech sent me this screenshot of their report generator. In this case, we've made our selection. And now when we click the print button, we have a very nicely formatted, professionally presented report inventory by category. In this case, it's presented as a, an Adobe PDF file. We also, from the TriTech system, can uh, create a downloadable Excel uh, report. So we can then take the information from the report generator, put it into Excel, where we can further refine our analysis. Now, many people are familiar with applying filters in Excel. So in this case, I don't want to see all manufacturers, I want to limit my focus. So let's apply a filter. From the data tab of the ribbon, let's toggle on the drop down filters and then use the drop down to say, don't show me all of the manufacturers. In this case, I want to limit my view. Let's just say I want to see three manufacturers uh, Gemeinhart, uh, Jupiter, and Yamaha. Click OK, click OK. And there you go. So now I've limited my focus. I want to introduce you now to the advantages of using a pivot table. This is a sample pivot table report that I created with fewer than 10 mouse clicks and without writing a single formula. Now notice that I have filters over here in the pivot table, just as I have piv um, filters over here in the data set. However, in the data set, the one major limitation is that I'm viewing all of the fields. So unless I go through and decide to hide the fields that I don't want to see on, on view, I still have a really un I have a report that's difficult to, to really see the, the data, to see the information from the data. So over here with the pivot table, I don't have to use all the fields. I just pick the fields that I wish to use. So I have one, uh, two, three fields, and then I have a subtotal for a summary of, of the next field. And you can quickly change the layout. Now, as I mentioned, this is an overview of creating pivot tables. As I proceed through the series, I'll go into greater detail to help you to create and understand uh, how to use pivot tables. All right, let's come back here. And first, I want to remove the filter. So click to remove the filter. And then I want to actually remove the drop down filter. So it is a toggle. Go back to the data tab of the ribbon and toggle off filter. Now, before I go any further, this is extremely important. Do you notice that I have applied bold formatting up here in the top row? These are the identifiers for my field headers or my column headers. If I didn't have uh, distinctive formatting applied, well, Excel would be confused and say, well, this is text, that's text. And if I sorted it, I'd have, <laughs> I'd be lost. So a quick way that you can make your uh, top row or any row a different format is use the keyboard shortcut control shift and the right directional arrow and from the home tab of the ribbon in this case I'm going to toggle off bold and now it's still selected so I'll use the keyboard shortcut control B to toggle it on all right so now that we've made that important preliminary step begin with a single cell selected and go to the insert tab of the ribbon in Excel 2007 Excel 2010 and select the pivot table command now we're going to take the defaults. Remember that we took care to identify the top row as containing headers and also notice that it's a contiguous set of data. No blank rows, no blank columns. So Excel has, click, has uh, identified correctly the data set that we wish to use. And we're going to take the default to create our pivot table on a brand new Excel worksheet. Click OK. And there you go. We have a brand new blank worksheet. And we have the pivot table, out, uh, the pivot table template over here, as well as the pivot table field list. 
Now notice coming down here, these are the top row of fields, the top row columns. So let's add the manufacturer into the pivot table. I really like this improvement beginning with Excel 2007. All you have to do when you want to add a field is come over here and then just check it. If it contains text, it's automatically placed into the row labels drop down zone. So the row labels go down vertically. Now, what if I want to do a calculation? Let's find a numeric field over here, the total cost. Click, and that is automatically placed over here into the values area. And Excel uses the sum function to provide this nice, neat uh, summary that we have. So we have a subtotal using the sum function by each of the manufacturers. If you want to remove a field, it's very simple. You can do it two ways. You can either uncheck it, or you can just simply click it and then just drag it off of the pivot table field list for drop areas. Now let's just say that we wanted to add in another field. We want to be able to have the category description. This contains text, so when I click, notice that it gets automatically added in here into the row labels. Now take a look over here, and if, if you're using Excel 2007, Excel 2010 for the first time, you're going to say, whoa, uh, something is wrong here. I have two fields, but they're in the same column. So the default setting for the report layout is what's called compact view. Let's change that to a more traditional, traditional tabular view. So what I want to do is draw your attention up here. Notice that we have pivot table tools when I have uh, one uh, area, when I've selected the pivot table click outside of it and they disappear. Click inside the pivot table field list comes back and we have pivot table tools for options and for design. Let's come over here into the design and for the layout I want to go into the menu for the report layout and I want to create my pivot table using the tabular view. So now instead of the compact view where the the fields are nested inside one column now we have separate discrete columns. Well, as I look at it, it still looks too crowded. It doesn't look like the report that I showed you over here. Well, that's really simple to change. Notice over here in the row labels, we have the manufacturer as the outer row and the category description as the inner. If you just click over here on the field that you wish to move, in this case, the category description, we want to move that up. So the description is now the outer row, or it's the outer field, and the manufacturer is the inner field. You see how easy that was? Just click, and then from the shortcut menu, determine whether you want to move it to another area, or whether you want to move it from an outer to an inner, or an inner to an outer. Okay, now let's add back in the sales. So in this case, I want to come in here, I, I should say the cost. So I add in my total cost. Again, one of the advantages is that if I want to move the manufacturer to another location, I could pick it up and drag it or just take advantage of the shortcut menu when you click. In this case, I want to move it over here into the column labels. Well, if you don't like that, a great keyboard shortcut to use is Control-Z to undo that. Okay, now the report is starting to shape up decently. I want to draw your attention over here to the numeric values. Let's say that you want to see it formatted uh, using the United States dollar symbol and no decimal places. Do not, I'm going to repeat, do not format the individual cells. Rather, we're going to be formatting the field because these fields are going to be moving around as we pivot our report. So with a single cell in uh, one of the numeric categories selected, use your right mouse click and come down here into the value field settings. In the value field settings, in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to change the numeric format for the entire field. Let's use accounting with zero decimal places and the US dollar symbol. Click OK and then close the report. So now you see we have pivoted or, or formatted the entire field because if we decide that we want to move the location, you see the formatting applies to the field. I'll use Control Z to undo this. Now, let's say that I want to be able to see a, a, another analysis of it. So uh, pivot tables are terrific when you want to ask, can you do, is it possible to do that? So let's just say that what I want to do is I want to be able to see the sub uh, description for the category click OK, and again, it's kind of, you know, crowded. 
what I want to do is I want to move the manufacturer to another of the drop areas. I want to move it up here into the report filter. So the manufacturers are now up here in the report filter. And notice that I have a drop down to be able to filter. Beginning with Excel 2007, we can filter the report filter, which was known as the page drop area in earlier versions of Excel. And let's just say that we want to not see all manufacturers, rather we want to see uh, Dodario, uh, Fender, Hoshina, and Ovation. Click OK, click OK, and there you go. So it's a nice report, and of course we can easily expand the field to, to make it wider if we need. We can also add in additional uh, summations. So for example, over here I'm seeing a summary of the total cost by the sub-description. What if I would like to see a percentage of the total? really very simple. So in addition to not having to select or view every field, we can add fields in multiple times. So just add it back in here into the values and this time what I want to do is I want to change the name and I want to change the way I produce a summary. So in this case I'll again come back over here, right mouse click, because I want to open up the value field settings. There's several ways to do it. I like the right mouse click as the easiest way to do it. Let's change the title. Uh, PCT for percent of total cost. And what I want to do is I want to show the values as. Over here, instead of showing values as using no calculation, I want to use one of the pre-made ways to summarize. So in this case, I want to show as a percentage of the grand total. And notice that when I want to come over here and look at the numeric formatting, because it's a percentage of, we already have the category. In this case, I want to remove the decimal places. Click OK, click OK, and there you go. So now I have two summaries of the same field, the total cost, I've used the report filter up here. I selected multiple manufacturers in here. If I want to bring it back to show all, click OK. And now it's starting to take a nice shape over here. I can remove a field or I can collapse the field. So notice over here that I have these expand and collapse buttons. So I can expand or collapse any one of the individual values in the field or if I right mouse click on the header, notice that I have expand and collapse and in this case I want to collapse the entire field. If I want to bring back one of the individual categories, expand or collapse um, those as necessary, or filter as necessary, or let's bring it back. Right mouse click, and I want to expand the entire field. So there's a very, very quick overview of pivot tables. Stay tuned as I continue the series, and I'll work through different scenarios that we can use pivot tables. Again, you see how simple it is? I did not write a single formula. I was able to pick the fields that I wish to use, apply filters, change the layout as quickly as on the fly, add in multiple summaries, and before I close, the really advantage of pivot tables is that you cannot harm the data. You're working with a snapshot of the data set in memory. So if I went through and I wanted to change that to 25, notice that I get an error message. So with the pivot table, you cannot harm the data. You're working with a snapshot in memory of the data. Now let me just uh, close by bringing you over here to uh, Tritex website technologyforretailers.com. So you can click over here to learn more about their products, their clients. And if you want to learn more about pivot tables, I have a 90 minute focused tutorial on pivot tables. It's available for Excel 2007, 2010, and also Excel 2003. Available as a DVD ROM and also available for you to download immediately. And I will look for you as I continue this series.